Hey, welcome back. We have a lesson on verbal models. Verbal models is like if you see a, an expression or an equation written out in words, and you have to translate that either into um, you know, symbols, numbers, that's a verbal model. So this first example that we have here, this is a, like a real-world situation that could possibly be used. You go ahead and read through this on your own, see if you can come up with a solution, and then I will um, show you how we're going to use, uh, how we translate some of this into mathematical terms. So go ahead and pause the video, read through this, and see what you can come up with, and then play it um, when you're finished. All right, if you look here, um, Captain Adams, he's flying from, straight through from Los Angeles to Chicago. But when he gets over near Chicago, there's something going on um, that he can't just land the plane. Like maybe there's some other planes on the runway. Maybe there's, um, you know, maybe there's like some rain or some snow that you know caused some delays, and and now there are planes on the runway. So he's got to he's got to do something, uh, possibly, before he can land. So he only he has two hours before he can get clearance to land. Well, let's think about this here now. Okay, so his plane, his plane speed is equal to 500 miles times the hours. Speed of 500 miles per hour. That's where I got that from. So, we know that if he is 600 miles away, he has 600 miles to go. Let's call this um, speed 1. So, he's playing 600 miles away. And he only has two hours to go. So the formula is distance is equal to rate times time. Rate times time. Or maybe science teachers, I think, use velocity times time. I think that's more what they use. So distance is equal to velocity. Velocity is your rate of speed times time. So the distance is equal to rate. I'm sorry, I keep putting rate there. Distance is equal to velocity times time. And so what will his velocity have to be in order to get to Chicago in two hours. Okay, remember he's 600 miles away. It says when the plane is 600 miles from Chicago, the air traffic controller says, whoa, you have two hours before you can land. Well, what number times two is going to give you 600? Well, you know that's 300. Okay, so his velocity, his velocity um, would have to equal 300 in order for him just to go from 600 miles because he's 600 miles away. So if he flies at 300 miles per hour, you know, because his initial speed, his initial velocity was 500 miles per hour. So maybe if he just slows down to 300 miles an hour, he could just cruise right into Chicago when he uh, when he gets there in two hours. He just land. But let's realize that Captain Adams, he's an expert at what he does. So let's keep reading. Captain, uh, the captain knows he has to keep the speed of the jet above 322 miles per hour or the jet engines will stall. And you don't want your jet engines to stall because once they stall, that means they stop turning. Once they stop turning, the plane stops flying and then it ends up 
um, falling out of the sky. Okay, so what should the captain's course of action be? Well, if he just wants to fly right into Chicago without doing anything, 300 miles per hour, but if he does 300 miles per hour, we've already talked about it. Can't happen. You can't go 300 miles per hour because the jet engines are going to stall. He has to go 322 miles per hour. So what should the captain do? Well, that's my quick drawing of the Sears Tower. Maybe what the captain should do is he should bring his plane into and around Chicago. And he should circle around until it's time to land. So maybe that's what he should do. Yeah, he probably needs another wing over here. So maybe he should fly around. That should be his path. So I'm thinking he needs to fly around. Um, if it's real necessary, if he really needs to land in two hours and he can't fly around Chicago, maybe he needs to, um, you know, maybe he's low on fuel. I would highly doubt it. I would think that they would have enough fuel to, um, to fly around the city for a little bit. But, you know, if he's low on fuel or something in emergency where he needs to land, maybe he could land somewhere else uh, at another airport between Los Angeles and Chicago. So this is... Uh, this is what a verbal model is. We had to take and come up with uh, just different scenarios. Just different scenarios on what was happening. Um, you're going to be thinking of different phrases for um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So I've kind of made you a little chart here. If you want to write this down, you can. If you're in my class, this little chart is in your book. So you make the decision. If you want this in your notes, you put it in your notes. This is uh, one of the few times that I'll give you um, a choice here. Everything else should probably be in your notes. But if you're looking here, um, sum means addition. More than means addition. Plus and increased. Uh, so that means addition. If it says the sum of four and a number, when you see this, a number, that's usually a variable. Okay, a number means a variable. Now, go down here to the very bottom. It says a number, M. So it is telling you what variable you're supposed to use for a number. You're going to be using M. Back up to the first one, when it said the sum of four and a number, well, the sum of four and a number, I just picked X. You could have picked, uh, you could have picked Y. You could have picked Z. You could have picked any variable you wanted. Um, and you'll notice in the second one, pin more than a number. I did pick Y in the second one. In the third one, I picked H. So the only time you have to choose a certain variable is like in the fourth example when they tell you what variable you're supposed to be picking you're supposed to be using so okay let's move on to uh, subtraction phrases for subtraction here um, we have these ones. Uh, the first one says the difference of four and a number. Well, the difference, difference means subtraction. And so this word and, whenever you see and, you should be thinking this is where the minus sign goes. There's where the four goes and a number x. There's where the X goes. And um, it's kind of where you put your operation, whether it's plus, multiply, divide, um, or subtraction. Um, let's look at, actually, none of the other examples here use the word and. 
Um, this let's look at the third one. A number, so a number, and it doesn't tell us which one. A number x minus three, and we just kind of write them down the way they they come along, with one exception, and that would be example number two. Example number two is uh, is a really tricky one. This is the one that throws most people off. They, when you see less than, you automatically think minus, and which is right. You should be thinking minus, but you should be remembering less than. This is the tricky one. Okay, it says 10 less than a number. So I know it's supposed to be a variable, but I want you to randomly pick any number. Pick any number. It doesn't matter. What was that? What number did you pick? Did I hear uh, 60 back there? Yeah, I think I heard a 60. All right. That is not a very good looking 6. So a number. And I, I'm randomly picking a number. When I write the expression, I should be using the variable. I should be using a variable. But So it says 10 less than a number. I randomly pick 60. What is 10 less than 60? Well, if you have 60, what is 10 numbers less than that? Well, 10 numbers less than that is 50, correct? Well, how'd you get that? 60 minus 10. Okay. Well, let's pick another number. What's another number you have? Another one? 18? All right. I heard somebody say 18. So, 18. What is 10 less than 18? 10 less than 18 is uh, 8. Yeah. Well, how'd you get that one? 18 minus 10. And one more. One more number. Uh, 25. Okay, we'll put 25 down. 25. What is 10 less than 25? 10 less than 25 is 15. And you got that by saying 25 minus 10. What do you notice that's the same with all of these problems? Minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. What's different? What has varied in every problem? The first number has varied in every problem. The first number is different in every problem. So it is varied in every problem. That's where you put your variable. Okay? So sometimes if you're having trouble thinking about where the variable goes, maybe try to pick some, some numbers. See where it goes with numbers. And then you should see what is constant every time. What's the same? And now let's look up here. You notice how minus 10, that's the constant part. It's always there, minus 10. And then what is different? The variable changes, y changes, or x, or whatever variable you wanted to choose for a number. Okay? So that one is the tricky one. That one right there has uh, thrown a lot of people off. It still throws a lot of people off. You just have to pay attention to that one. 10 less than a number. 10 less than a number. Phrases for multiplication. There they are. Um, you notice I have an asterisk there. That should be a dot. That should be like 4 times x. Um, this one here says y times 10. Uh, typically, we don't put y times 10. We always usually just put the y right after the um, coefficient there. So you just put the y right after the 10. So let's look. Product, product times and multiplied mean you're going to use multiplication. This one here says the product of 4 and a number. Product means multiply, so that's why we put multiplication where the and is. In the previous example, let me slide back there real quick. Remember, where and was, we put a subtraction symbol because it said the difference of 4 and a number. 
Um, and the rest of them are pretty much self-explanatory, I think, right there. Except down here. The last one says a number multiplied by, and it's blank. It should be three. A number multiplied by three. Typically, like I said, this is the way you want to write it. Uh, we typically don't write them like this, but you can, uh, you should be able to recognize them if they are written like that. And for division, quotient and divided. The quotient, okay, so we put a division symbol where the word and is, and then you drop down four and a number. Four divided by x. And right here, that's a fraction bar. You can have four divided by x, or you can have four divided by x, or you can have four over x, or four divided by x. They're all the same. I prefer fractions to look like this, and not so much like this. This is the way I prefer fractions, the way on the bottom, uh, over and under. It's just that the computer program I have will not allow me to uh, put them over top of each other real quick. Um, so make sure your fractions are over and under. And that's just because... Uh, that's just because we're going to get into problems. Let's see. If we have 4 divided by x plus 3, 4 divided by x plus 3. They're kind of the same, but they're kind of not. They look the same. That's how they're kind of the same. And how they're kind of not the same is that you don't do them the same. Remember, you do order of operations, and this is a grouping symbol. So it says 4 divided by everything. What you should be thinking, x plus 3 is in a parentheses together because it's below the fraction bar. But if we look here, x plus 3 is not below the fraction bar. x is the only thing below the fraction bar. Plus 3 is out to the side. So keep that in mind. And that's the why I suggest over under for fractions. Okay. Now... This stuff, um, I don't believe this one's in your book, so I am going to want um, this written down. Yeah, I do want this written down. Uh, just pay attention before you start writing down. I, I want to speak about that a little bit. Um, phrases for equations. Phrases for equations. Equations means we have an equal sign. And you can see we have an equal sign. The phrase for an equation is is. Okay? So if we have a number increased by 10 is 25. Well, a number, x, increased by, means plus, 10 is this, is, is, remember, is means equals. So you'll put an equal sign right below is. And then 25. And you see how it matches? So anytime you see is, and is is all by itself, because I let me look down here. You see how is is with less than? Okay. So anytime you just see is all by itself, then you have an equal sign. Down below... Phrases for inequalities. Inequalities are this. Less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. And you are I'm going to be required to memorize those, so make sure you have those memorized. Phrases for inequalities. Um, this less than, so when we have an inequality, a number, so a number, let's say x, less than. Well, I see less than right here. This is this is a little bit confusing here because remember, this less than represents a minus symbol, but this one right here represents a less than symbol. And the key difference between the two is this right here, that is. 
you have to pay close attention. That is tells you we have a less than symbol, and then the less than right here has no is with it, so you just put a minus sign. So a number x less than minus 10 is less than 25. And I've even done what I told you last time to uh, pay attention to on the uh, subtraction slide. Um, a number less than 10, well, this less than is the thing that trips us up. 10 should have been first because a number less than 10, so you pick any number. What is 3 less than 10? 3 less than 10 would be 7, and how'd you get that? 10 minus 3. Uh, 15, no, let's not go 15. Let's go 8 less than 10. 8 less than 10 is 2. You got 10 minus 8 there. And so that's why here you should have 10 minus a number. I got caught up on um, explaining the difference between a less than symbol um, in words with a minus sign in words. I completely forgot to uh, catch this. Okay, so you don't want it that way. And the other three are pretty much the same way. Um, notice these don't say increased by. So this is going to be a um, an addition. So a number. Actually, let me move down here. Let's move down to the very bottom one. A number, which we're going to choose X, increased by, which is a plus sign. Uh, a number increased by 10. And this is, is an indicator for you should pay attention is and you should be thinking either um, equal to or an inequality is greater than or equal to so greater than or equal to 25 25 so if you're having trouble just go ahead and write that stuff below there unless you come to this problem and then you can't write it below you got to think about it um, so uh, you notice I picked X for a number. The uh, What was already here had the variable R. So as long as you have any variable, any variable works. Okay, a couple things here. You just got to pay attention to the word is. That is going to be your equal sign or your inequality. And remember, make sure you have those memorized, the uh, symbols, what they mean. So if you want to pause the video, write those down real quick. And um, actually, don't pause the video yet. Let me erase this for you. And you got a clean board. So get that written down, and then we will um, move on to the next slide. All right. There are four examples here. I want you to try to match these four examples. So one, two, three, and four, and I want you to write the letter down uh, that matches with the number. So you go ahead and try this on your own, and then I will work out the solutions with you. Pause the video and then play it when you're finished. Okay, so let's look here. Number one, it says... 11 decreased by the quantity 4 times a number x. Okay, well, here's 11. We know decreased by means minus, and the quantity, when you see quantity, quantity kind of puts some things together. And you notice 4 times a number x. So here we have 4 times a number x. I don't like the way that's written because that's dot x. I just want to go ahead and write it like this. So 11 decreased by the quantity, 4 times a number x. And quantity meant, well, what you have to do is you have to do 4 times x first. And then you're going to say 11 decreased by whatever 4 times x is. Um, 
quantity means kind of you follow your order of operations. Grouping symbols, exponents, multiply and divide, and then you do addition and subtraction. Quantity says, well, there's subtraction, here's multiplication. Figure out the multiplication first, and then you move to addition and subtraction. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring out what we have there. This one goes there. Number two, four increased by the quantity 11 times the number x. So four increased by plus quantity means we're going to uh, work out this part first, follow our order of operations, 11 times a number x times the number x, and I, you notice I put the dot there. Um, hmm. I don't see this in the answer. Do you? Well, what they have done here is they have kind of used some properties on us. If you look at, uh, let's look at letter D. We know that 4 is a positive 4. And let's look at letter D. We have a positive 4 because that plus sign is with 4. And we know that this part right here is a positive 11x. And you know this is a positive 11x. So, it doesn't matter which way you have it written, the way I have it written, or the way that it's written um, here. But that's the solution. You kind of got to recognize that you can um, rearrange those. The uh, names of those properties are coming up here for you. But you can rearrange those. Uh, I believe that is the commutative property. And in that rearranging process, you get the answer. You get the same thing, actually. Let's look at number three. Number three says four times the quantity of a number x minus 11. Four times the quantity of a number x minus 11. This is where quantity comes into play because this kind of looks like four times. Now, quantity means you have to do whatever's next first. Well, if we go ahead and write x minus 11, if we leave it this way, order of operations say we're going to do 4 times x first. But that word quantity says what we're supposed to do is somehow we're supposed to put a number x minus 11 in order of operations so that we can do it first. Well, how can we do x minus 11 first if multiplication comes before subtraction? Well, think about what we have here. See, multiplication is coming before subtraction, so therefore, can we do something else to make x minus 11 happen first? How about what we do first? Grouping symbols. So therefore, you put parentheses around it. And you see it looks much cleaner there. And so obviously number four must be A, right? Well, let's slide that out of the way and let's go ahead and look. This is four times a number X. Four times a number X decreased by 11. Decreased by means minus 11. Now, you notice 3 and 4 look really, really close. But that right there, the quantity of, that's the difference in the problem. And that's how you know to have a parenthesis in that one is because you see quantity. And I guess even up here, we could have put this in parentheses, number 1. We could have put it in parentheses. But multiplication comes before subtraction anyways. So in number 1, we didn't really need the parentheses. But down here, number three, we do because subtraction is uh, down at the very bottom of the order of operations along with 
edition. So, there you go. Let's look here. This is a number increase by 4 is 17. I want you to go ahead and try and um, write these out. I want you to go ahead and try to write these out. And you notice these have is, so that means you're going to have an equal sign or you're going to have an, an inequality. Go ahead and write these out and um, play the video when you get them finished. This is a number, a number. I better uh, choose a different variable than x because I tend to use x a lot. So I'm going to use uh, g. A number increased by 4, and uh, that would be g increased by means plus 4 is, and there's nothing else with it, so that's an equal sign, 17. g plus 4 equals 17. Okay, number, uh, the second one, the product of 7, 7, and, well, and, what's that mean? That's where we put product. Multiplication. The product of 7 and a number y is, there's nothing else with it, so that's an equal sign, 42. 7 times y equals 42. I don't like this as an answer because it has the dot for multiplication. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit. 7y equals 42. This is what I prefer as an answer. The third one, 20 divided by a number is less than or equal to 2. So 20 divided by a number. Well, we can pick a number. Let's pick um, the letter A. 20 divided by A, and now is less than or equal to is less than or equal to. This is means we have an equal sign or an inequality, and this inequality means less than or equal to 2. Um, you could also write this as 20 over A is equal to, I'm sorry, it's not equal to, is less than or equal to 2. Either way is uh, acceptable. And then down there at the very bottom, 10 more than a number, uh, 10 more than a number, this is kind of like less than a number. So 10 comes here, you add 10 to whatever this number is. So 10 more than a number, and now we have is greater than, is greater than 14. Uh, x plus 10 is greater than 14. Wow. My board needs calibrated here a little bit. Let me try this again. x plus 10 is greater than 14. There we go. We got it. Okie dokie. All right. Well, there you go. You have it. Verbal models. Um, you just have to remember what those phrases are that represent each um, operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, pay attention to is, is less than, is greater than, and so forth. And remember that um, that one that I uh, got messed up on because it's not completely paying attention. It, it's a tricky one. So when you see uh, 5 less than a number, Five less than a number. You gotta write it like this. Five less than a number. That's all we have for verbal models. We will see you at the beginning of the next show. Thanks for showing up.